He-Man's taking damage. Here's your look at the new Mattel Master Universe Origins Battle Armor He-Man. This 5.5-inch He-Man battle figure has 16 movable joints for action, scenes, and power posing. The figure comes with extra accessories and a special swappable head and also includes a special battle armor that spins the show when he sustained damage in combat. Before we get a closer look at Battle Armor He-Man, obviously the first thing we're going to want to do is know how tall the figure stands, even though the description reads the figure is 5.5 inches in height. We'll be the judge of that. Taking the tape measure to the very top of the figure's head, stopping it right there, the figure in fact actually stands 5.8 inches in height. We can switch that to centimeters, revealing that Battle Armor He-Man is 14.7 centimeters tall. Seeing as we've done enough of these, let's bring in a couple of other He-Mans for some size comparisons. We'll bring in first the original He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe, so at least he says. And we can also bring in Prince Adam, another He-Man figure that we've had a look at. Let's just get his feet to straighten up there. Yeah, you can pretty much see same figure again, well at least same arms, same legs, different torso, and hey, look at this. Also battle armor He-Man sports a brand new head sculpt that we'll get a closer look at in a second. Before doing that, though, let's have a look at the accessories that come included with the figure. For starters, you get yourself an instruction sheet. Nothing really new to report here. Basically, it just shows you how the two halves of the sword can come together, like we already saw with the He-Man figure. And this one also does have the lightning effect that attaches to the end of the blade. It's presented here in several different languages, so you'll be able... If you don't understand, of course... Oh, do I have it, I have it flipped around? I have it flipped around the wrong way. Thank you for yelling at me over there. Yes, other than just having the diagrams there, which pretty much can tell you exactly what's going on with the instructions, they also give you, of course, some read-ups. They're featured on the side in different languages. Put that to the side. Can't believe that was the other way around. He also comes included with a brand new comic, something that the other figures up to this point have not come included. With somebody who has been looking forward to seeing another Beast Barrage or even a Double Trouble, no, not here. This one doesn't give you a title name, however, but it does give you some new artwork there featuring He-Man and a brand new Skeletor presented on the front. The inside of the comic, as you can see, has a story. The one thing about this, though, now I ordered this online. I'm wondering if either the comic has decided to get rid of the dialogue, because I know a lot of European releases of these figures omitted the dialogue altogether. So it was something a lot easier to the, for them to produce the comic. You just had to keep running these off. The only thing that would have been different, of course, is the title. Well, I guess the title, no, because the title would probably still stay the same. But I can't help but notice, yeah, there's no dialogue anywhere in here. If you have picked up this figure for yourself, let me know down below in the comments section if the comic you have actually has dialogue contained on the pages. Again, I don't see anything on here. Again, and I ordered this from a Canadian store. So we'll just put that to the side for the time being. Okay, let's have a look at the things that come include with He-Man. Now, there's things I really want to talk about. I guess the biggest one is probably his sword. He comes include with a power sword. Nothing really different here necessarily on this sword. Well, you know what? Let's bring in the other He-Man power sword so you guys can see the difference side to side. Short of, I would say, maybe the finish of the plastic being slightly different. This seems a little bit more, a little more silver, perhaps. When you look at the two, this one, the one that we got with He-Man is a little bit darker of a color. But I don't think anything has really changed with the swords. And when I say nothing has changed with the swords, one thing they didn't do, unfortunately, was they still gave you the halved swords. Doe. Now, bringing in the Prince Adam sword, for example, we had a look at that. Short of the fact it didn't have the thing on the side of its hilt, it did give you at least a fully realized sword, which is one thing I mentioned in that review. Why they couldn't have done that with Power Armor He-Man is beyond me, because, I mean, we already have that sword with He-Man. Why not give that the opportunity to give us a fully both-sided sword? But they didn't. They only gave us one half of it. The next solution I would have had to the problem... If you already had picked up this He-Man, you already have this half of the sword, right? So why didn't they actually take this sword and flip it, invert it? I know what you're thinking. Well, how could they have done that? Well, if you remember, Skeletor's sword is essentially the same sculpt, and it just had the opposite plugs. So, of course, the male is a female. It would have plugged in place. Why they didn't just mold the power armor He-Man 
with skeleton's sword mold. Because then you could have actually taken both swords. You see where I'm going with this? You could actually have taken both blades, put them together, and you would have had yourself a full power sword. Like that. I mean, that's a that's not the most lined up, but you get the idea. Why didn't they do that? Because you could either then half He-Man's sword with Skeletor's, or if you already had Power Armor He-Man, you could use Power Armor He-Man's flipped image. I guess the only thing that would be different, again, is the part down below by the handle, but at least you would have gotten yourself a full sculpted sword, if, again, you want to put the two halves together. Just an observation I would have made. Go ahead and put that to the side. In the same placement as He-Man, you can flip around Battle Armor He-Man, and there's a little slot located on the back of his torso, right at the top there, it says 2020 Mattel. Slide that right into place. Snug as a bug in a rug, is that what they say? That's what you're getting here. The sword slides conveniently in place into the back of He-Man's torso. One thing it also does feature, yes, yes, we'll talk about the head sculpt in a second. It does also come with the lightning effect that you can take and take the end of the blade and slide into place like that. It's okay. You know, it's something. It does add a whole lot of extra weight, however, because, I mean, you would imagine, like, this is, this, in fact, is heavier than the sword itself. And if you have that held up upon, up into the sky, you know what He-Man does after all, it does add a little bit of extra weight to it. And I feel it's a little on the chunk side. They probably could have just streamlined this a little bit, even if they had just had wrapped around electricity, that they could have wrapped around the sword. I think I would have been better for that. Um, the other thing, too, is I don't know why they had to give such a large peg on the underside of it. I mean, you know how slender the sword has to be, and not unless they decide to make it a little bit thicker, because if you then you had the two halves of the sword, I don't really know, but it does seem like it's unnecessarily thick. It doesn't need to be the case at all. It comes included with that. He also comes with the same battle axe that we had gotten before. Nothing different with this one than the other one that we had see received. Not a bad looking battle axe. Probably would just end up displaying, I feel, battle armor He-Man with the axe instead of the sword, just because the other He-Man already has that. He-Man also comes included with an alternate hand. So if you want to decide for yourself to display this side of his body with holding something instead, he comes with the necessary hand to do that. And you probably have noticed this whole time while I've been talking and yammering away about his accessories, he also does have a secondary head sculpt. And I'm really glad the fact that they did actually throw this in here. Questioning why they didn't include it with the initial He-Man, but you could probably say this particular figure is under the deluxe branding. It's a little bit more expensive, but it does come with a retro-designed head sculpt of He-Man. And I'm always liking the fact that they include that. So you can go ahead, for example, just reaching off to the side, you can take the original He-Man that we'd gotten before, pop the head sculpt off the ball joint, not pop his torso off, mind you. Pop that back in place. Pop the head sculpt off. Let's try that again. And you can replace it with the vintage He-Man head sculpt instead. The only thing I would say, when you're looking at it, it seems a little off. Maybe it's because now I'm so used to seeing this type of head sculpt on these kind of figures now, but I feel like this head sculpt seems a little on the small side. Am I finding fault with it? Possibly. Maybe. It's potentially ha possible. But it is a little on the small side, I just noticed. I mean, when you put it rec next to the regular He-Man, I guess, like, the face isn't different. Maybe it's just the hair that gives them a little bit of extra sizing. Maybe they should have brought the hair a little bit bigger. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm thrilled for the fact that we get ourselves a vintage He-Man head sculpt that can actually fit with these regular He-Man figures. I like that. Probably never would end up displaying it, but I do appreciate the fact that they included it. Go ahead and just pop that off. And obviously, the fact that I was able to do it on this He-Man, the same rule applies when you're having a look at this He-Man. We can go ahead and just pop the head sculpt off. I noticed on this He-Man, though, the ball joint seems a little... I don't know if it's the head sculpt or if it's the ball joint. Something at the top, maybe it is the ball joint, feels a little more looser. But just in case you're curious, pop that head sculpt on. And you get yourself just a regular, well, the classic style of Battle Armor He-Man from the original 80s line. Again, I appreciate the fact that they did that. Only downside, though, is the neck color that you probably have already seen. It's a different color than the rest of the plastic. Obviously, the arms are that plastic flesh tone. It's a little bit lighter than the color they tried to mimic, tried to at least duplicate from the peg to the neck. The neck is a lot darker. And when, of course, you put a regular He-Man head sculpt on top of it, yeah, we'll talk about the head sculpt in a second. It is, uh, it's not quite the same color. Go ahead and pop that in place. There we go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about He-Man's head, then we'll go down to the rest of He-Man's body. Obviously, in a case here with Battle Armor He-Man, we get ourselves a brand new head sculpt. 
good or bad, debatable. It certainly looks like He-Man has seen something that he's not sure if he wants to tell other people. Something has surprised him, certainly. Again, when you bring in a regular He-Man to kind of give you an idea of how the difference changes one from one to the other. Not really liking this head sculpt, honestly. But at least, if you have the mileage of getting the other figures in your collection, you can easily swap this one, swap this one here. Something I actually even consider doing myself. You can follow suit if you want to. Take this head sculpt off. And I'll probably go back to it anyways, because that's another one that comes included with the figure. And I'm actually thinking about removing Prince Adam's head sculpt. And Prince Adam is, uh, well, he's not like Cringer, but I would imagine if anyone is going to be more surprised, it would be probably Prince Adam. So I think I probably will maybe dis decide to display Prince Adam's uh, body with this particular head sculpt and then maybe use this head because it would be the same as the original vintage line. Maybe use this one then with the battle armor He-Man. Again, just to kind of show you, I know you guys probably could use your imaginations to just imagine what it would look like. I just kind of like the idea of battle armor He-Man having the same head sculpt as the regular He-Man and then have surprised Prince Adam. What has he seen? Good thing, at least, is they're using the same ball joint. I can't imagine why they wouldn't have used the same ball joint. I mean, after all, it's the same figure. Why use different head sculpts, different ball joints? Go ahead and pop those off. I know I'm just popping a whole bunch of heads off and putting them onto brand new bodies. There we go. Okay, so short of the fact, I'm not really sure how I feel about the face, getting a good and closer look at the face sculpt. I can't help but also feel like, and it's maybe just the red around the tongue that's throwing it off, but his teeth come across a little on the pink side. Am I the only one that sees that? I can't help but also notice that the black atop of his eyes, because they're a little bit longer and they're not quite lining up to the shape of his eyeballs, it actually comes across like he's using a little bit of an eyeliner. That's unfortunate. I will admit, yeah, maybe the paint has let down the head sculpt a little bit. Maybe that's why it's looking a little more surprised than what it should be. I probably just have a case here where I've got myself a bit of a paint misalignment issue where clearly those eyeballs aren't, they're not even in the same, well, they're not even in, well, in the same vicinity, but they're not quite in where they're supposed to be. And I think what's thrown then it off is the eyeliner. It does look like eyeliner. Looks a little higher on his eyeball. And his teeth look a little on the pink side. But the rest of the figure, I mean, of course, if you are a big fan of the Power Armor He-Man, which has always been one of my preferred favorite figures. I don't even think I actually had one of these He-Mans back in the day when I was younger. I had the original He-Man, of course, you already know the story of that, but I never really had myself a battle armor He-Man. I always really wanted to get one. The trait, the feature about this one is upon impact of hitting his chest, this chest front logo here spins. Now, if you had collected the Master of the Universe Classics He-Man, they would have done something a little bit differently. They would have removed the torso piece. I think you would have then had to go in there and replace the plates. This doesn't do that. This actually has something that functions as a real working gimmick. To show you how the gimmick works, technically I could just flick it with my finger, but let's get the full effect going here. We're going to grab his battle his battle axe here. All you're really going to want to do is just hit this. Not super hard, but if you hit it, well, probably if you hit it with maybe a more solid point, it actually leaves a damage mark. A big slash across that logo. You hit it again, and it does a secondary slash across that torso. You get three swappable or three flippable plates, to then flip it back, you just push your thumb against it and just roll it up. You can roll it back to the first damaged plate. And then you can, from there, roll it back to the original, the way it looked originally. What you need to do, though, is just push your thumb into it. And then when you're pushing down, roll it. Well, again, you can kind of see right there. There seems to be a functioning spring behind it. So again, when it releases from that spring, it pops back and it spins in the process giving you that battle damage look. That's really cool. I like the fact that they did go back to basics and use a real functioning gimmick as opposed to, like I said, with the DC, with the uh, Master Universe Classics. What they originally had done was, they, like I said, just the torso piece came off, you added a new plate, and then you had to put the torso piece back into place. I like that this is more akin to the original vintage line. As for the rest of his body, it's pretty much all standard He-Man. Same arms, same legs, same lower furry tor torso, and of course the same furry boots. There's nothing different between the two figures. Same with the original vintage figure. There would have been nothing different between the two other than just the torso piece. 
And I again, the head sculpt would have been the same, but they decided to do things a little bit differently on one release here from this one to this one here. Let's have a look at the articulation here on He-Man. So his head rotates all the way around. Again, I can't help but notice that his head sculpt seems a little on the loose side. It moves down, it moves up, it moves back and forth as well. Hmm, just not really sure about that head sculpt again. The arms rotate, however, all the way around. You can hinge them also out. He does have a bend at the elbow. You can rotate that forearm around the point where the elbow bends. And you can also rotate the hand all the way around, also bending at the elbow or at the wrist as well. Then when it comes to his torso, his torso swivels back and forth. So there's nothing overly complicated there. Legs split outs. A full split's working for battle armor He-Man. Oh, that's got to hurt. You can bring the legs forward and back. He has a bend at the knee, you can see down below there. And he also has a split on the boots. And you can also not only move the feet back and forth this way, but you can also ankle pivot them also. Uh, I like He-Man. I like certainly battle armor He-Man. Even though technically, if you already had picked yourself up a He-Man, there's enough changes, I feel, from one to the other. Let's get his arms all bent and straight here. I feel like there's enough difference from one to the other. Even though technically the original vintage He-Man, I think, would have only done all the same stuff except for the torso piece. That's the only thing they would have changed. At least with this release... They decide to give you a different head sculpt. It's debatable whether I actually feel like I like that head sculpt. That surprise look I don't think works necessarily for Battle Armor He-Man, but I think it might work a lot better for Prince Adam in my display. Of course, one of the other accessories that come in clear with the Battle Armor He-Man, as shown here in Final Looks, is the energy effect that you can add to the end of the Power Sword. You're not even really so much adding it to the end, it literally just engulfs the entire blade. I get the fact that they were trying to throw something else into the figure to make it warrant its deluxe release, because these deluxe figures are going to be a little bit more expensive than the regular standard figures that we've been looking at up to this point. But I find it's a little bit too big, bulky, and certainly adds a lot of unnecessary weight, especially if he's trying to hold the sword up into the sky. It's a little bit more difficult when you've got a big chunk of plastic on the end of the blade. I appreciate the fact that they included it, but it's not going to be something I'm going to display with the figure. I think it just it's a little bit too obnoxious, if you ask me. As for certainly the figure it goes, I appreciate the fact that they went back to basics and gave us something more, a feature that you would have expected to see from the 80s. I don't think swapping out plates is the best way to go. I mean, obviously, the Master Universe Classics went that route because it was just a lot easier than having to put a spring gimmick in the torso. It also allowed them the opportunity to use the same body for all the figures. Here, though, going back to basics, we got ourselves an actual gimmick on the figure. It's not to the point where it ruins the figure because you can still get all the same posability. Nothing gets limited here, but it's fun to be able to hit something against Prince Adam's chest or He-Man's chest and actually have that damage effect happen twice, two different slashes. Skeletor is also going to have that as well, and I'm looking forward to getting that. Um, the one thing that really is disappointing about this figure is yet again, they go back to the same drawing board and still use the same power sword. I still feel if they were going to be doing this, why not use the mold of Skeletor soul sword, mold it in the silver plastic, and then instantly you would have had the ability to merge the two halves together to finish off a full power sword. Because already He-Man has this sword already. Why not then just give him the opposing opposite sword to this? You can display it and put the two halves together. It just seems like an obvious idea, and yet they didn't end up going with that. We got the same power sword that came in clue with He-Man. At least he comes in clue with a battle axe, which is probably going to be what I'm going to display with the figure anyways. Great looking figure, though. Not really sure how I feel about the surprised face. What do you guys think about it? Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of battle armor He-Man. Do you like the alternate surprised face? Yeah, I'm not really sure about it. I'm still on the fence. It's probably going to end up being with my Prince Adam. Also, if you're new to this channel and you're enjoying all the content you're seeing, because we've been doing a lot of Master Universe Origins figures as of late, I feel like of all the things I've been reviewing as of late, just thinking of all the different lines that I cover on this channel, I think I've had the most fun rekindling my experiences as a child, having a look at the Master Universe classics. I know not everybody is enjoying, I say classics, the Origins line. Not everybody is really picking up the Origins figures. If you're a big fan of the Masters line, then yeah, you probably are picking up. But all maybe casual fans aren't even getting this line in the first place. But I love the line because it reminds me of stuff I would have collected as a kid. Like I said, I've had probably the most fun in a long time having a look at these figures above all the other things I've looked at on this channel. We will be having a look though at Battle Armor Skeletor, his review, May not necessarily come up right after this one, but it will be right around the corner. But the key, though, is making sure you're not missing out on anything by hitting the subscribe button down below, by turning the bell notification on, and by, yeah, coming back to this channel on a regular basis. 
it always really is best in your best interest to not only just come back on a regular basis, but just periodically check the main page of the channel. All the thumbnails featured there will give you a good idea of the things I've reviewed lately. And there may be things, judging by how much stuff I post on a regular basis, it may be something that you may, may have missed. And you may go back to the homepage and say, well, wait a minute. I've looked at this video. I've looked at this video. I've not seen this one, though. There you go. You're welcome. It's the least I could do. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.